All right, everybody. So um, better turn that down. It's not my volume to you. Uh, you know what I started doing? I started listening to, did I already tell you all this? I started listening to the Old Testament all the way through. So Genesis, and it's while I eat, you know, and it's Jesus uh, in the parables that are the seven letters. To us, they're parables. To them, back then, they were seven literal letters to seven literal churches, but parallels to us and sort of parables to us because it's written in a way that like you have choices and um but one of them anyway i digress I'm, i always get all over the place but one of them it mentions open the door or something like that and i will sup with them so when i eat dinner i always feel like i should be doing something productive um for the lord and it used to be I would watch conspiracy theory videos to help me come out of the world and understand the evil. Um, but shutting all of that down because there's I'm not learning anything anymore from conspiracy theory channels because most of them are controlled opposition and I have to sift through their lies to but they'll also tell you the truth on a lot of stuff. So it's you know, that's part of their world. Just like the Lord told the truth. But some things were very difficult to understand. And uh, Jesus sort of spoke in code. And they were called parables. And the apostles asked him why he did this. In Matthew 13, 10 and 11. And he said, because it is meant for you to understand this secret, mysterious code of truth. But for them, it is not meant to. And Mystery Babylon does the same thing. Remember, their world is an upside down version of ours. And um, so they have a lot of leeway and a lot of latitude. Anyway. But yeah, so the volume's always up loud. Leviticus is very interesting. It's all interesting. I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot. And uh, anyway, so Philippians chapter 2, 11 through 21. And every tongue declare that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Uh, the heading says, shine brightly for Christ. Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. See, that's why that whole thing, well, I know I'm saved. I've chose Jesus. Fear is absolutely gone at that point. If you just walk around and say, you know, you're saved. And the people that say that, of course, have no clue, which means they're not saved. They have, they're sitting there believing in their free will decision. And since they feel they made their free will decision, they declare themselves to be sheep. When real sheep are never totally sure, that's part of working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If I was absolutely sure I was a sheep, I'm sure I'd be fornicating and still probably smoking weed and dipping and dabbling in my astrology. Come on, people. You don't you don't walk around and say, I know I'm saved. Now, I would like to think, even if I knew, I would not do those things because of my love for the Lord and because of things that he could do to me while I'm alive. Like, oh, well, you have eternal life, but this is going to happen to you, and that's good. it's going to be a miserable life. So, you know, I'm sure that fear would keep me straight regardless and out of love and reverence. But, yeah, anyway. For God is working in you. Yes. That's how you repent. For God is working in you. That's Christ in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. I want to see how that's written in the King James. Remember, the new living is just watered down. For it is God which worketh 
in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Thank you. Way better. Way better. This is God's script. You're just a vessel. And we're in hope of being one for sure. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights. Well, there you go. That's the um, the lamp, the salt. We are salt and light. And uh, we are the only... How do I say this? The words just escape me. We're the only illustration of God on this earth other than, you know, what you would call nature. So we see God in his nature, the sun, the moon, the stars, the birds, the plants. But sheep are the only like real, I guess, human aspects. I don't know. I don't even know how to say it. I just know y'all understand what I'm saying. I don't even need to go. But I will rejoice even if I lose my purpose. Hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud now. There is no proud in the King James. Sheep don't take pride or proud. That's the pagan world. So when we go to verse 16, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Let's just stay in the King James. I think we can do it and understand it. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all, for the same cause, also do ye joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. Wow. Paul commends Timothy. Uh, but watch what he says about the others. If if the Lord Jesus is willing, I hope to send Timothy to you soon for a visit. He can cheer me up by telling me how y'all are all getting along. I have no one else like Timothy who generally cares about your welfare. All the others care only for themselves and not for what matters to Jesus Christ. Very interesting. Paul puts a lot of shame on a lot of folks, doesn't he? Anyway, um, Daniel 7, continuing on with the Antichrist, everything in yellow is God winning, and the rest is definitely um, the Antichrist winning. It looks like today doesn't get into much of the Antichrist, but in verses 20, uh, 21 through 25, let me see, yeah, 21 through 25 most definitely. And a fiery stream issued and came forth before him. Thousands of thousands ministered, thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were open. So that goes back to judgment. I beheld then because the voice of the great words which the horn spake. So there's your Antichrist Bible verse. You know, the mouth speaking great things. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed, given to the burning flames as concerning the rest of the beast they had their dominion taken away yet their lives were prolonged for a little season interesting i saw in the night visions and behold one like the son of man came in the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom 
that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away in his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. So that's God's kingdom again. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit. Is he grieved because God's winning? No, it's the things about the Antichrist that we've gone through in verses 1 through 14 so far. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. And we will get to more tomorrow of why he was so troubled, because it's the end times, Antichrist. I love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.